Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we have Bill in low carbon orbit and he's on his way to the moon to go and rescue Jeb because Jeb can't seem to allow himself enough fuel for a moon mission or at least he couldn't on the, the mission before this. So uh, here I am mucking about with my manoeuvre nodes trying to get something along the lines of a um, efficient transfer burn. Uh, I, I'm not the, the best at this, but then I'm not the best at Kerbal Space Program given the uh, tone of my commentaries for the past couple of um, missions. So I'm uh, tweaking around here trying to get as little Delta V used to transfer as possible. Uh, once I'm happy with it, we're going to time warp through up until the appropriate maneuver node and then start thrusting because this engine is so small. Um, I'm not using the other three engines because I want to conserve all that fuel for getting back to uh, back to Kerbin once we've landed on the moon, picked up Jeb, got the science and flown back. Uh, we take the opportunity to give Bill uh, a small view of what's going on outside the cockpit. After all, he is up here for the good of the mission, of the good of the planet, all, to be fair. Um, this, this, at least in this universe, is only the third space flight and already we are on our way to the moon to try and save the guy who left himself out there. I mean, Jeb, hey, Jeb can be a bit of a bit of a pain and a bit of a handful to look after at times. He is a bit of a diva and he likes to... Um, portray himself well in the public in the public eye whereas we all know it's Bob and Bill that see him through so thrusting on with our LV 909 we're trying to build up enough Delta V to sling ourselves out of Kerbin orbit and up to the moon that is just cresting the um, horizon there that of course that, that tells us that we are thrusting in the uh, the right direction because when the moon is on the horizon it's at 90 degrees uh, and, and the way that orbits work, it's all about gyroscopic precession and 90 degrees just happens to be the place where we need to push up to get up to the right spot. As demonstrated by, oh, well maybe I didn't want to look at that map that well. As should have been demonstrated by that map, I'm sure we'll, I will uh, fly back to it once we've got, oh, a little bit of staging done. That's why I didn't hang on to the map. That staging was a little bit outside of um, my mission plan. Obviously, I'd intended to take that stage all the way to the moon um, because I wanted to save these f three fuel tanks for getting off the moon again. But if you remember last episode, uh, there was a slightly early stage um, just coming out of the atmosphere, and obviously it's a knock-on effect from that. But now if we look up at, the, at my map, we see that I am uh, on a perfect uh, transfer orbit straight to the moon. Uh, I set myself a small maneuver node just to let me know where my point is my point of deceleration will be and we just take a moment to sit back and watch the moon approach at some sort of ridiculous speed as I time warp up it's about here that I'm like right this is getting close enough now we should slow down and, uh, keep an eye on the times till the next maneuver and uh, according to my little clock there that is an hour to go and I'm not waiting around for an hour so if after a small orientation of the ship so we could at least watch the front door I don't know why, I just thought it'd be slightly better to watch the front door drop in than it would be to watch the back of the cabin. Uh, and we time warp up and for once not overshoot. Uh, I do a, a slight reorientation, possibly look for the moon. No, we're going to do this inside the map because I like to be accurate like that. Now we start decelerating hard and hopefully get ourselves into a nice circular orbit around the moon just like that and when I think oh no we're not going to circularize actually we want to go down as low as possible so we bring this down within a hundred thousand meters I think I even bring it down to something like 50 and then we set a small maneuver node so all I then have to do is wait until we're at the bottom of our orbit uh, a small um, jump in the music there shows you that I made a small mistake um, on this particular section before. Uh, one thing that I, I didn't notice when I was putting this mission together, but believe me from now on I will know, is these LV-909s don't actually produce electric charge, or if they do it's such a small amount of electric charge that the SAS and uh, torque mechanisms just gobble it up before anything's got going. Um, and yeah, I, I would have shown that, but it was literally just me getting to about this point and then going, oh, I can't turn. So now we're going to um, try and speed up time to bring that capsule right there in line with the sun. Because I don't know about you, but I don't really like trying to make landings in absolute darkness. 
Um, unfortunately, because I can't be bothered to wait for it to come around into full light, uh, and in fact only go to about here where we've got um, sunrise upon the, the landing site, uh, which I believe was what the Apollo astronauts needed, so they could have nice long, nice long shadows on their on their boulders. But anyway, um, so we, we muck around with the maneuver node here and try and obviously no atmosphere means we can try and put down right on top of it. <coughs> if only I was ever that good a pilot, hey. Um, the the maneuver nodes are good, everything looks fine. So I'm just going to trust in my my systems here to try and take me to the right spot uh, and at any point soon I will jump into staging view and we can watch the darkness that is my ship against the darkness that is the moon in the dark darkness 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 and at least we can see the engines thrusting um, start slowing down I, I really want to try and get this as exact as possible because the the better I am that the closer I am on the far point of my orbit the less Delta V I have to spend when I'm close up trying to make it right. Uh, as it happens, I still ended up kilometers away, but uh, I, I think that's not too bad. All right, a, a small orientation, um, and then trying to conserve electricity, I, I warp up and not put SAS on. Um, SAS is a bit of a killer for the electric at this point in the game where we don't have any solar panels with the, most of the engines don't actually produce the, um, electric charge. Uh, the um, thrust vectoring ones that we have at the moment, I'm afraid I can't remember the name of them off the top of my head, but they produce electric charge. Uh, and a quick look at my cheat sheet back here shows it's the LVT445. So that's the one that I should have used at this point, but they were heavy and they were expensive um, obviously it doesn't really matter at this point in time with no uh, credit system on the go but it's a good plan for when squad um, implement this uh, economic system that they have as obviously have planned um, right so here we are uh, trying to kill the lat our lateral velocity so that we can get close enough to that spaceship so we can put down nice and gently and yeah and just generally have a, a nice safe landing unfortunately I was a little bit either heavy-handed with the thrust or a bit early on my timings as you can see now I'm now actually like traveling away from it that's no good we have a small spin round uh, waste a little bit of fuel just to get a little bit closer because we don't we don't want Jeb to, to run too far uh, obviously it will be Jeb traveling out here because he's the one that messed up uh, Bill's just gonna sit in his can and wait for Jeb to come to him I think you'll agree is only right and proper as the one that uh, messed up should be the one to rectify the situation I mean Bill's just a chauffeur really isn't it I mean no he's not Bill is so much more than just a chauffeur but in this particular mission he's just a, a chauffeur um, right so easing it down um, I do have this habit of kind of skipping my uh, not skipping as in missing skipping as in like bouncing along on this top of top of the arc to set down nicely until I figure it out and uh, just get get thrust down uh, I think the main mistake may have been putting three engines on because it, that means there's only sort of a, a minimum amount of thrust that I can apply um, and, and, and minimum thrust when you're this close to the floor isn't what you want but we put down safely and Bill uh, has a good smile and a laugh around and there we go we are on the moon um, the only thing we've got to do now is, yeah, walk, um, walk, fly, travel, Jeb, the 4.3 kilometers from this place, from this ship to the other one. Now, if you remember, this one doesn't have enough fuel to get out of the moon, out of the moon your orbit, but I reckon I can fly towards it. So off we go, and something goes horribly wrong, and I'm like, thrust, 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 and it all things off and things break and I panic and I'm pressing buttons and it's oh no that's all right because everyone's still alive so we'll have a look around we'll, we'll flip this over and we'll try and get Jeb out of the box um, obviously this this spaceship is is a lost cause it was a lost cause the moment I touched down um, and we're gonna use the jetpack to fly four kilometers now that's quite a boring process literally all I was doing was flying in a straight line um, pushing myself well keeping myself at the top of the arc um, I wasn't really picking up any speed so we're gonna skip through and jump in next to us being really close to the ship 
So with the smallest of touchdowns, I would like. I wish I could be that gentle with a spaceship when I place down. Um, we're gonna run up, and I don't know whether I take the uh, mission shot here. Yeah, yes, I do. Here we go. So we start off with that, and we we move Bill out. We start off with moving Jeb next to the ship. Move Bill out to go stand next to him. And we spin around, we've got two smiling Kerbals in front of a spaceship and Kerbin in the background. Yay! Um, yeah, it's cool, right? So, with all the PR footage done, we turn around and start putting Bill away into the ship. Um, getting beautiful views of Kerbin all the time. And sizing up the view, seeing, seeing how we're going to get him into the pod. Which, thankfully, is quite a, a, an easy task. Uh, I start running Jeb back and then suddenly I'm like, wait a minute there's something I forgot to do here so I start, start doing some science get a uh, crew report an EVA uh, surface sample and plant a flag uh, Jeb's flag reads uh, thanks Bill as Jebediah does indeed owe Bill a gr debt of gratitude uh, I put in the description here that Bill rescued uh, Jeb right here and then a little post then um, at least he got me out into manual orbit because I'm still not sure at this point whether I can make it back or not. So I thought I'd leave a little cautious footnote on the flag there, just in case. Next up, it's time for the savior of the moment, that master of poison elegance, Bill. He <laughs> jumps out, um, I wander on over. We also do a bit of science with him, take a surface sample, take an EVA report, get that science and plant a flag that's a bit, oh, I don't know, a bit more passive aggressive, entitled again, exclamation question, exclamation question mark. Um, and the, uh, the the plaque reads, can't he do anything right? Because Jeb, oh my god, diva, mess head. Um, yeah, he, he just gets everything wrong and it's up to Bill and Bob to come along and save his life. Uh, if it wasn't for them, if it wasn't for Bill especially, Jeb would have died multiple times over. Right, so with the smallest puff of thrusters up, um, I then lean towards the horizon and do my best to get up to speed to get us out of out of gravity's pull from the moon basically um, thrusting forward as fast as I can reaching for the horizon um, as all good astronauts should obviously or are they Kerbinauts? I mean I don't know what language do, do, do they base their sort of uh, space language upon like we've got astro based upon Greek right so what 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 do what do Kerbals have I mean are they, are they Kerbinauts I mean Kerbinauts is like calling us us lot Earthanauts and that's that we're not Earthanauts are we not, not when we go to space so uh, yeah, well, there's, there's a little something for you guys to think over I mean they're not Kerbinauts they're really not so at this point, those of you who are more observant than myself, especially while I was playing this, would have noticed that my electric charge has run out. And this leaves me with a very serious issue when it comes to uh, orientating my spacecraft. And in fact, it's somewhere around here that I notice it. It might even be the next boost, where I'm like, hmm, I'm thrusting away, but can't turn, well, no, no, I can turn while I thrust. I can't turn when I'm not thrusting which makes this whole um, process that I'm about to do here a bit redundant because I'm like, mm, swing this round, look for an, uh, 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 an effect, no, not effective, an efficient um, transfer orbit to bring me down into Kerbal um, atmosphere and so I have to use less thrust, rah, 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 rah. But that's, that, that, that's all rubbish and we'll see why once at the moment I come out of here. Will I be coming out of here? I, I might just like finish this whole thing on map view. I mean, I, I know everyone enjoys map view, watching those lines. Right, so it is about here. You, you see this little this little pause here where I'm like, oh no, no, my thrust isn't working. My things aren't working. So I give it the tiniest amount of thrust to start spinning, build up some uh, time acceleration, and I'm like, oh no, I've just made my nose process. We're, we're not spinning at all. We're just kind of doing that little spinning top that's about to fall over wobble. <laughs> so, oh well that's, that's no good at all um, and also one of the major 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 flaws of me trying to uh, turn my ship like this is of course every time that I boost a little bit I've uh, put my orbit more out of sync than with my uh, manoeuvre node which means that now when I come to look at that I'm completely out of whack um, which means that we're going to have a bit more of a a hard time getting down to, to Kerbal than I was hoping for. So we're just going to do it by the seat of our pants. I'm um, like, all right, stuff the stuff this maneuver node. Let's thrust up and go find my prograde, and we'll just get out of Moonia orbit because 
that that at least is phase one right if we can get away from the moon and get around kerbal we're a bit closer for bob to come and rescue bill and jeb right yeah because obviously that's the next mission from this point yeah yeah maybe but before we start planning the next rescue mission we're gonna have a, a good old look around on the uh, maneuver nodes and see what we can do about getting these two home under their own power um, for, for some reason I've spent a lot of time th this mission just kind of aimlessly doing that moving my maneuver node around see, checking to make sure that my uh, gut feeling of uh, the, the points of where the most efficient burn will be is actually correct and it turns out well I'm very damn close to it so I should probably stop doing these things and wasting time on videos and just go for it I seem to have picked up after a little bit of time playing this game an intuitive feeling for how uh, orbits work so I should just run with it right so we now have oh according to this maneuver note 13 hours to waste before we can get to burn up these 30 liters of fuel that are left it's not a big amount of fuel by any uh, stretch of the imagination but hopefully we are far enough away from Kerbin that the smallest of little will be enough to push our orbit back down um, because obviously the further out you are the slower you are so if you make the change the bigger effect it has or at least this is how I, I, I feel now all right so we're now a accelerated 10 9 8 minutes away um, that, that is dropping quickly and about 40 seconds I start easing up my thrusters to try and line myself up with my retrograde so we can start bringing ourselves down into Kerbin orbit on the other side and as you saw I ate through that fuel in next to no time but thankfully that was more than enough as my calculations were correct not calculate I didn't really calculate that I just kind of guessed as my guessing kind of works um, realized that I hadn't used a bit of the science on here so I thought hey we're at high in orbit we might as well try it here see if we get some better science turns out no it just thought I was in orbit around curb curbing um, but you know that, that's how things are you, you can only get the science where the new and valid science is uh, available for you uh, and we're going to watch the wonders that is the uh, orbital flight um, going through a planet it tells me where I would end up if the ground wasn't there uh, obviously the ground is there so that's a bit bit rubbish uh, and we, we get down into the atmospheric burning and I decide it's about time we, we watch some re-entry effects from the cockpit and there we go that was that was that you're welcome people I, I thought that was amazing uh, we, we observed some goo in atmosphere um, obviously there are things that I forgot um, I, in fact I decided not to take that one because I think it would be much better if we saved that those amounts of science for our plane flights because I do intend to do some serious testing with planes at some point maybe take one to live um, I wonder if we can fly one in Joule I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think the atmosphere in Jewel is breathable, but but maybe. And obviously, Eve as well is a, another place. So parachutes are out. Things are coming down nicely. All looks like we're going to have good fun with these guys here. A good fun. Good safe landing. That's exactly what I meant. And there we go. Everyone's back safe. Yay! Mission accomplished. Not only was it a spectacular rescue mission, but we also managed to earn ourselves 228.4 science. Uh, mainly this was from surface samples from the MUN um, because surface samples are where the science is at it seems um, yeah and as we pan rather uselessly around my, my, my base uh, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this uh, next episode we will be going to Minmus as that's the next one out uh, hopefully we won't be having to rescue Jeb afterwards again but who knows that, that, that's the way that my flights work it seems so we'll probably have two flights. We'll send Jeb up first and then we'll go send Bob and Bill to rescue him. <laughs> but yeah, thank you much for joining me for this adventure, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.